folks, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and another Photoshop Elements 14 video tutorial. Now, this Photoshop Elements uh, 14 tutorial will also work on 13 and 12 and probably even back to 11. Uh, if you're using some of those older versions, though, I can tell you that uh, what we're talking about today, you may have to update them and make sure they will work with the current cameras. All these shots that you see here were taken uh, actually today. Uh, these are all fresh, and they were shot with my uh, Sony A6000, and I shot all these in the RAW format, R-A-W. Now, let's first touch base a little bit with RAW and JPEG and a little bit of the differences. And I know we've talked about this before, but if you're new to these uh, to the videos, I want to introduce you to this stuff and, and get you a little bit more accustomed to shooting uh, RAW and why you may or may not want to do that. Let's first start talking about uh, RAW in its uh, easiest form. When you're shooting RAW, that's saying that we're going to capture everything. Uh, we're going to capture it exactly as it is. We're going to capture all the colors, and uh, we're going to capture all the detail, all the lighting and everything when we shoot in a RAW format. That's exactly why it's RAW. It's just very uh, open, and it's non-compressed. Now, with compressed images, when we're using our cameras and we say to shoot in JPEG mode or J PEG mode, the camera actually does a lot of work for you and it compresses the images down. Uh, it does the best guess with lighting, uh, with exposure, and with colors, and it compresses those down to an image. And the reason you do that, the reason JPEG was created originally, was to make a smaller file size. Uh, the RAW format is a little bit larger file size. And I would like to show you, I'm going to take a look here and see if we can show you uh, with an image here. Uh, if we can maybe uh, show file info. Let's see if that will do that. You can see over here on the left, this file size is 24.20 megabytes. So it's a pretty hefty file. And the Sony uses the raw format ARW. Okay, ARW. Let me see here if I have maybe from before when I was at the Amish country. Let me see if I might have, uh, let's see if these were shot in JPEG. Nope, those are actually raw images also. Uh, I know those are raw images. Um, let's see what this one is. That's raw. Obviously, I shoot a lot of stuff in raw, and um, so I don't really have anything to show you here, and that's raw. But anyway... What I was going to tell you is I was going to show you a JPEG. A JPEG picture would probably be like 2.6 megabytes. Um, instead of being, like as I just said, um, let me turn this file info back on, uh, instead of being 24.20 megabytes. So why is that really, really critical? The, the critical part of that is that your disk or your card, your memory card, will hold more pictures if you shoot in JPEG. So if you're shooting in RAW, and the reason I did this today is I knew I wanted to do this class with you folks out there. And if you're shooting in RAW, um, I'm going to show you in a minute, you can do more with the photo and you can adjust it more. But JPEG uh, is something you want to shoot with if you're on a trip. Uh, like the recent cruise I was on, uh, I shot everything in JPEG. I didn't even take a computer with me. We didn't take a laptop with us on the boat. So everything was kept on the memory card. I used the 32 gig card. And it would hold something like 6,000 JPEG pictures or whatever. It was something ridiculous. And I knew I would never fill that card up. So I just shot everything in JPEG because I didn't want to go through all this raw processing uh, with the images. And they came out pretty nice. So some cameras out there will shoot raw and JPEG together. Mine will do that. So when you take a photograph, you take a shot, and you have a raw and you have a compressed image. Uh, if you put those side by side, it, it, you may see some differences, but chances are you probably will not see any differences with those. But you can just do a little bit more with it, uh, if that makes any sense at all. So we're going to take this shot here. I thought this was kind of a little cool picture here uh, with the flowers and with the uh, birdhouses. And we see it's ARW. And that's what I said earlier at the beginning of this video. Make sure that you are always updating your elements because as the new cameras come out, Obviously, the Sony is the mirrorless uh, A6000. They have a new model now uh, that, you know, of course, supersedes this one because they want you to buy the new model, uh, which we're not going to do because this one shoots really, really uh, perfect pictures, and it's a great camera, so why would I bother? Uh, but if you're inclined to having the newest thing, 
But when you get these new cameras, you have to make sure that, you know, Elements is keeping up with all these new raw images and this new uh, raw editing to make sure that it's going to accept your images into uh, the organizer here, the Elements organizer, as well as the editor. So you're going to go ahead and right click on this and we're going to say open it in Photoshop Elements Editor. And you see you get this box right here. And this box is the raw editor. Okay, it says it right up there, camera raw. And the one I'm running right now is 9.5. You can check on uh, Photoshop Elements uh, website or Photoshop, you know, Adobe Photoshop website and see what the new cam newest camera raw uh, download is and make sure you're up to date. So in here, we can do a lot with this raw editor, uh, except for maybe, eh, I guess we can make it a little bit bigger here. So we could do a lot in this raw editor and we can do things like uh, magnify. So we can uh, zoom up here anywhere on the photograph. We want to zoom up and we can look at this photograph. Uh, you can see the zoom. Uh, the photograph is very well, uh, very, very good image. It doesn't uh, pixelate at all. I mean, because you're shooting at, you know, 20, something like 24 megapixels. We'll take it back down and fit it to screen. Yeah, we'll bring it up one. There we go. Uh, the other thing we can do here is we can move the image around. The eyedropper allows us to pick certain colors. So if you're, or uh, white balancing. Okay, so when you get your image and uh, you click on a color, that's going to adjust the white balance. All right, you can see here where it says white balance custom. To take that back, there's no undo button in here. So if you just right click and say as shot, or you can just click this pull down menu here and click as shot, and that will change it back. To get a good white balance, though, if you have the eyedropper and you pick out something and it's white, you'll see now that the colors have all got better in our histogram and everything's in the middle here. That is a custom white balance. Let's go back to sh as shot. The next thing you can do here is we can do some cropping. If we want to crop out some image, we can straighten the image right in here. And these are just very nice little thing, red eye removal, very nice little edits that you can do inside the raw editor. Uh, there's a preference dialog here where you can look at the preferences of it. We don't really need that. We can rotate the image just like so. So we're going to go back to the normal setting here. And we see here that on the right, we can shoot. We can change. Our, we can shoot. We can change our white balance uh, as shot, auto. There's a daylight. And you can play with each one of these. Now, if you shoot this, and this is a JPEG image, many people email me after these kind of videos and say, well, Jack, if I'm shooting raw, can I open my JPEG image in here? There's really not a whole lot of reasoning to do that uh, because you're going to use all the settings in Elements to do all this, what we're doing in here. But you don't have the white balance settings if you're shooting in JPEG. All you will see is as shot and auto and custom. You won't have all the settings here. Tunston, and that's what makes this nice because we can come back and look and say, well, maybe fluorescent lighting looks kind of like a cool coloring combination. Of course, it doesn't. It looks very, very cool. Uh, and this is a flash photography. Well, maybe that's something that you would like. Uh, maybe you want something that's a little bit cloudy, so you can change the color based on what you want. Myself, when I do it, I like to use the eyedropper. Find myself a nice white point like this um, uh, window still here. Click it, and I like to get set my white balance that way because I know that I'm picking out something that's white or something that's a gray color. And let's see what happens if we pick out this gray uh, canister here. And you can see if I pick that gray, the color also has just a very unique feel for that. So it gives you a couple ways to do it, but I do like the eyedropper more than trying to drop this or play with these two sliders. The next thing we can do is start playing with our exposures. We can bring our exposure up, obviously. We can bring it down. If you double click any of these, so say you bring this down to the left and then you double click, it brings it right up to the center, right back to where it normally was. So if you make a mistake, you don't have to try to pull it back to zero and try to get it in there. No, we just double click it and just drop it back towards that. We can play with the highlighting of the photograph just by dropping the highlight down or bringing it up. Very easy. The shadows are the same way. Bring the shadows down, bring them up. We can do that. We can play with our whites. Yeah, I'll bring our whites. Let's, I like to bring the whites down and bring your blacks up a little bit. All right, there you go. Clarity, vibrance, and saturation. A lot of people like to run their clarity up. 
and that gives the picture a little bit more sharpness. If you really look at these flowers, let's try to look at those flowers here. Let me bring these flowers up for you. Uh, that should be enough. And we'll turn the clarity back to zero. Now, if you see the flower there, here, we'll bring this up a little bit more. And we're going to give it more clarity. So bring up the clarity. Look how that's bringing that flower out. You got to be careful because you can almost make it too sharp and it doesn't really look real. You have to leave it so there's a little bit of fading, a little bit of soft focus dropping off because that's a normal photography shot. The vibrance, if you bring your vibrance up, you can see where you can get the colors more in depth. Just playing with vibrance, you can bring them down a little bit. Uh, so you can you have a lot of detail there and obviously saturation where we can oversaturate, undersaturate, and kind of anything we want to do there. So I'm going to drop the clarity back, drop the vibrance back, drop this back. Bring my whites back to zero and my blacks. Once you get the photograph looking the way you would like it to look in your raw editor, and as you can see here, Every time you open up a raw image, this uh, camera raw dialog box is going to open up. So what it's telling you is every image you shoot. So if you're if you're on that cruise I was on, and I took over you know a thousand some pictures, every picture I want to if I want to edit it, I have to open it up in this in this raw editor here. The next part is the detail. So the first one we're on is basic. The next one here is detail. This gives you sharpening. Amount, radius, detail, masking, and noise reduction. That's really, really important. So noise reduction means very simply, and we've talked about this on videos before, is very simply noise reduction is if you're getting a lot of grains in there. And what I mean by that is if you take some cameras and you take the ISO, say, up to, uh, I don't know, 3,000, or uh, you take your ISO up to 1,800, and you start to get a little bit of graininess in there, you can actually reduce that a little bit with the noise reduction. And that's what that's going to do to help you out. The last one here is just processing. It says 2012 current. That's the current raw. Adobe standard. You can use the different kind of camera profiles. I just use Adobe standard and let it ride with that. Once you get all of that done, folks, you click on open image. Now you have your image in your editor, and this is where you can start doing your processing such as, you know, creating new layers, such as everything we've talked about in these videos for over the years. But it's just a really, really uh, cool little way to do things here. Um, you know, because if I started to edit this image, the first thing I'd want to do is start getting rid of these tags. Uh, and we'll talk about this later on, on uh, future videos. But I'd start getting rid of some of these tags and stuff, such as this. Uh, you know, maybe back here. And you would clean it up a little bit. Just, you know, make it your own. And I'm just using the uh, content aware tool here just to uh, get rid of those tags. You may get rid of a little, uh, you know, place there in a can. So you can actually clean this photograph up. I always suggest looking at the photograph, clean it up, especially if you're going to print one of these and hang it on the wall. So, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial with Photoshop Elements 14 camera raw but again like i said it works in other versions 11 12 13. now if you want to learn uh, elements 12 13 or 14 by all means i want you to go over to my courses and you can find those very easily at let me see here bring this up at jtclearning.com that's jtclearning.com and you can see here we have photoshop elements 12 13 and 14 folks are only $35 to take the courses and it's a really really nice way to teach you from the very basics taking you all the way through and teaching you all these great tools and layers and processes that you need to know to get the most bang for your buck out of Photoshop elements so folks thank you very much for watching this video tutorial and I'll talk to you next time on Jack's Tech Corner bye for now